Triathlon swims mostly happen in the open water, and the open water is, well, open to the elements, which means waves, currents, tides, and, yep, chop. We've got a video on how to swim through waves, and you can click that in the description down below if you want to learn that. And currents and tides, well, we can't really teach you in a YouTube video. You'll have to ask a local on race day uh, what the currents and tides are doing. But we can teach you how to swim through chop. Before we go on, just a reminder to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy this video and subscribe to GTN so you don't miss any of our videos. Now, CHOP is the name given to the small, unpredictable waves that come up in the ocean, whipped up by the wind, unlike waves that are generated by the tides. Because they're whipped up by the wind, CHOP can come up very quickly and it can also fade away equally fast depending on the wind speed and direction. Also, unlike waves, CHOP is erratic and unpredictable. Swimming in CHOP will slow you down. Unlike waves where swimming with a wave can actually make you go faster, in swimming in CHOP is gonna cause erratic, unpredictable waves and it'll affect the timing and effectiveness of your pull, so you are going to go slower. The trick is to be the person who slows down the least in choppy water. Tip one, arm recovery. The most important adaptation you can make for swimming in choppy conditions is how far out of the water you bring your hand during the recovery. If your hand comes through low, close to the water, during choppy conditions, the back of your hand can hit those waves and that's gonna slow down your forward progress, or at least throw out your timing and your balance. So you wanna practice lifting your arm higher out of the water, keeping that hand and forearm above the choppy conditions so that you don't slow down your forward progress and can swim forward more efficiently. Tip two, breathing. Being unable to breathe effectively in choppy water can be the most daunting aspect of a rough water swim. You turn your face to breathe, and instead of getting the breath, a choppy wave is right there and hits you in the face. You get a face full of water and no air. So what you do is you lift your head to get that breath, your feet sink, and before you know it, you're hardly moving forward anymore. So preempt this by rotating a little bit further over, lifting your head further as you breathe, and also breathing a little bit further to the back under your armpit. This way, your head protects your breathing mouth from the waves, and you're less likely to get a face full of water. Also, make sure that you breathe in with a smaller mouth as possible in choppy conditions. A wide open gaping mouth is sure to catch splash and spray while it's choppy. Tip three, shorten your stroke. And now we know you've always been taught and the pros swim with these long gliding strokes. But shortening your stroke is much more forgiving in open water and in chop. Now we're not talking about windmill arms and thrashing your arms here, because that's just gonna wear you out and make you tired. And when you're tired, the chop will keep on pummeling you. But we are talking about a slight limiting of the extension phase in the front of your stroke to get your arms moving around a little bit quicker. A faster stroke is more forgiving of disruptions to your stroke. A missed breath or a missed pull or a bump from a competitor or just a badly timed sighting can be more easily overcome. When your hand enters the water, extend it out forward and then immediately start the catch and the pull with no glide whatsoever. Still finish your stroke and get that rotation in so that you're getting the full power from your stroke, but just shorten the front end of your stroke a little bit and it'll be more forgiving. Of course, if the chop is coming from behind you and you're getting little rolling waves that you can ride, then lengthening your stroke a little bit will help you make the most of those conditions. Tip four, breathe on both sides. Now we're not talking bilateral breathing here, which is alternately breathing on either side, although that is a good skill to learn and you should probably practice it. We're talking about being as comfortable breathing on the left as you are breathing on the right. And this is something you can and should practice in the pool. This way, if you're as comfortable breathing on the left or the right, if the chop is coming from one side, you can simply breathe to the other side, to the leeward side, and comfortably breathe through the whole swim. Tip five, swim low, sight high. In choppy conditions, it's easy to miss your sighting. You sight as you normally would, but you don't see the boy. So you have to sight again and again and again until you finally see that boy. Rather, commit to sighting once, 
properly and exaggerate it. Get your head really high and make sure you see where you're going. And then put your head down and swim low. Put your head right down into the waves, stops you rocking and rolling with every little wavy chop and you swim more straight and more efficiently. And then when you do sight, sight properly, see it once and head back down. You've got to really commit to attacking those waves in that chop head first, literally. And our final tip, keep going. As Dory says, just keep swimming. When it's choppy out there in the open water, it can often feel like you are simply not moving. And that boy is just not getting any closer. Unlike the pool, where you can see the lane rope moving past you, it can feel like you, the water is moving with you and you are simply not going forward. This is a cruel illusion. You are moving forward, you are making progress. Get your head down, keep swimming, and you will get to that next boy, that next turn, and the finish line of the swim. Swimming in choppy water is not the most fun part of a triathlon, definitely not for me anyway, but it is rewarding. As daunting as it is, standing on that start line looking at those waves, it's as rewarding standing on the beach afterwards, knowing that you conquered those wild waters. Good luck for your next race.